Hi everyone, Dr. Nimichek here. And I've been asked by some parents to put up some material they can refer to when talking to people about the ability of helping children with autism improve or maybe even potentially recover. They say when they use that word or try to you know, suggest that they could do more to help their kids recover more, that the parents are being treated like they're crazy. So I want to go over the literature that supports that this can happen. Now, one of the major problems here is this concept that autism in some of the children may have a genetic component. True. All right. But this is not a primary genetic uh, barrier that one would see with, say, Down syndrome. All right, 100% of children with Down syndrome have the same one problem that we cannot uh, overcome. We cannot change the features of Down syndrome. Okay, totally agree with that. Many of the children with autism have no detectable mutation. There's over 250 now, I think, uh, mutations that are more likely in autism than children without autism. Sure, great. But this is one of many other factors that are affecting these children. This is similar to type two diabetes, where there's a proportion of people with diabetes, they have a genetic component, they're more apt to get it. But yet in spite of that genetic component in diabetes, we can change the outcome. We can get their blood sugars down, even put it in remission. If we, you know, drugs, diet, you know, lifestyle changes and so forth, okay? So the word genetic doesn't always mean immovable, all right? Now the first concept of recovery or maybe best outcomes, uh, they're just dancing around the word, uh, was back in 1987. And there've been a number of case reports and small groups of children being described as they uh, with substantial recovery or even becoming neurotypical. Now these papers have been routinely criticized because of this factor or that factor, but mainly how well was it diagnosed diagnosis of autism made, okay? Well, to address that was this nice paper that you can see on the screen right here in 2013, where they took uh, three groups of kids. They had autistic kids who had recovered, that was 34 children. They have high functioning autism, 44 children, and they have neurotypical kids, 34 of them. The age is about eight years to 21 years in all of these kids. And they were show of these 34 children with autism had reached a state of what they call optimal outcome. They're using this term because the word in recover is just too inflammatory for people, okay? These kids on many, many assessments of social language, everything, they have a whole big list of everything they tested were equal to kids who were neurotypical all along. They were not distinguishable from these other children, okay? This is peer reviewed, these are scientists. This was a highly, highly well-designed study. It is possible for kids to go from autism to normalish, optimal outcome or recover, whatever word you wanna do. It is possible. It is not possible with Down syndrome, but it is possible with autism. Okay, so we have to get this out of our head that this is some fantasy, it's not. And these kids weren't even treated in any particularly aggressive way. They were given the typical ABA and things of that sort. So we know it's possible. Does this mean all of them can? We don't know, but it means we ought to try. That's what this means. And so people are trying. So here's another uh, nice little paper. If I can get my mouse here to work. Okay, this was in 2022. Um, and here they took 18 kids, well-documented autism in a six month uh, Korean medicine, highly herbal type of regimen, um, showed significant improvements over and above um, kids that were not being treated uh, with this regimen. And they would measure them by cars, the ABC and the ABC criteria. So here is just an example of doing something to these kids in a way that makes some sense based upon the modern science and getting some improvement out of them. All right. Now, here's a case of these twins 
um, published a couple years ago, showing that at age 20 months had level three autism, really severe, okay, needing lots of support. Uh, one had an ATEC of 76, one with an ATEC of 43. Over, over uh, three years of multiple things that the parents were trying in these kids, uh, both remedies and detoxing and all sorts of therapies, uh, rather traumatic improvement. One of the twins went from an ATEX to 76 to 32, which is a huge difference. And the other one went from 43 to four, which is pretty close to complete loss of autism. All right. So again, another paper peer reviewed documenting that you can change the course of the disease in these kids. That's what our protocol tries to do. Okay. We don't cure anything. Cure doesn't even apply. Cure is for if you have pneumonia or cancer. In a neurological uh, sense, you try to get recovery. If people have a stroke, you try to help them recover. Does that mean everybody is normal? No, it doesn't mean that. If some will, but if somebody's fairly severely disabled from their stroke and you put them in therapies and whatnot, and they gain a lot of functionality, can now take care of themselves and everything, they've recovered to that point, that's a huge improvement, okay? And so here is, with the Nemechek protocol, we balance the intestinal tract using rifaximin or inulin. We, that lowers inflammation. We lower inflammation by the addition of omega-3 fatty acids in fish oil. And we lower inflammation by using olive oil, which blocks the inflammatory omega-6 oils in the food supply. Now, when this was a survey done um, of 256 uh, parents, um, you know, parents of 256 children, I should say, 78 noted in uh, a year and a half or more substantial improvement in their children. 75% said that improvement was notable in terms of their speech. And the parents said that they would recommend this protocol to 96% of other parents. Okay, does this prove you can recover with my protocol? No, that's not my point. What this is telling us is, I don't think these parents are delusional, okay? They see what they see, they have therapists, they have teachers, they got other family members, all helping them make their opinion about what's happening. And this simple protocol can help children improve, all right? We have to get out of this loop we're in. When you believe this is genetic and there's nothing can do you can do, what happens is you don't do much, okay? You do your typical stuff, your ABA, but you aren't trying to lower inflammation, you aren't trying to fix the gut, you aren't trying to address the autonomic dysfunction that is rampant in these children. And if you don't try to address those, they don't really seem to improve. And so therefore, it reinforces, it reinforces your original belief that they can't get better. It's called a self-fulfilling prophecy. We got to recognize this. We got to snap out of this. We have a huge epidemic occurring right in front of us with these kids with autism. We've got to change our thinking. I hope this helps. I'll have the links for all of these papers in the subsection below, comment section, and you know, pass this around. Use these papers to help talk to your primary care doctor and others that we can do something different. All right, everybody, hope this helps. Have a great day.